LoRa and its associating LoRa WAN protocol are currently not officially supported by Espressif. And due to that, you've got a lot of products such as this one, which combine an ESP32 with a LoRa modem. And in the following steps, I'm going to use two of these, which are probably the most popular, and show you a little bit how to get started with LoRa on ESP32. These boards, you can actually get them from a variety of vendors. I bought mine from a local little Hungarian shop. And you see, they ship in this kind of protective case, which you see here. And you see here, we open it, we get the development board here. And what's important, you have here an USB-C connector. This designates this as a version 3. This little thing here, which I'm touching now to demonstrate with the pointer, is the Wi-Fi antenna. And this connector here, where is it? There is another connector here, here at, which says also V3. This is only for the RF. And yes, here we get some additional accessories. We get an antenna for RF. And we get these two connectors, which you just have to solder in here on the side. This is not particularly challenging, but you see, they fit in here like so, and then it's just normal pin soldering, and yes, you need to be a little bit careful that you don't damage the screen here. And for all those who are visiting us from Linux format, two quick advices. Number one, I like to use such a PCB, like so, that they don't wiggle around during soldering, and then of course you tack here, you tack here, and then you solder the rest. And secondarily, here with the display cable, the ones in the very front I would not touch. As you see here, this is GPIO Zero, that's the last one you need to solder. These are the higher order GPIOs, which are not particularly useful anyway, and I would not touch them, because I'm just worried about this FPC cable here. And this is something where the documentation by Heltec is wrong. This is the Wi-Fi antenna. And the LoRa antenna, you have to connect here. And you get here in the package such an SMA antenna with an Uffel adapter. And uh, basically, because we don't want to go anal here, we just do it like this. Always, you know, turn the nut, not the dot. You see here, but it is a bit difficult when you're filming. Either way, you turn it in well by hand. It doesn't need to be crazily strong, just strong enough. And then here, you have the Uffel connector, and you know, you just have to push it in, in a planar fashion, like so-ish. It's a bit difficult to do again while you're filming, which makes it fun. And you don't want to damage the connector, so it's all a bit sportive. And now you saw I put it in like this when it was not on the camera, but now this is connected. You see, antenna, Uffel adapter, Uffel connector, and it's ready to go. For development, I am going to be using the Arduino IDE, and as we see here, in the first step, we need to go here, and add an additional package resource, like so. And then we click OK, and now the Heltec package repository is available. And you see here that it performs an update, and then we can go into the board manager, and here we have to look for Heltec, And then we get here this package, 
which we install for ourselves. And when we get this confirmation message, the next thing we have to do is we have to go into the library manager and in the library manager, we again look for our well-known string here. And then here we find a variety of products. Most importantly here, we've got this by Heltec Automation. We install this one here. Either way, the next step, switch off and on the board and then run Demesk. And we see this is the USB to UART bridge. And now we know where the board sits. So we go here and now it will ask us what we are using. So for now we say, okay, to close this. And then we go here into tools, board, and then we select here the Wi-Fi LoRa V3. And only when this is selected, we are ready to develop. Otherwise, some of the things cannot compile. And when we have selected the right board, we see that a bunch of options shows up here. Most of these here are for the ESP32, but we've got here a few LoRa settings. The most important one is this one here, because this allows you to select the various bands where the LoRa stack will then work. And you must of course select a band which is valid for you, I'm going to be using this one here. And yes, you also should check whether you have the other fruit GFX. Because you see, for some applications, this is also needed. And be that as it may, next we are going to grab ourselves an example. We find here LoRa Basic and we start off with the LoRa Zender. And he starts by including this file here, which provides a variety of elements needed for interaction with the ESP32 and the LoRa module. And here we find some constants. These constants are used to define how the transmitter works. The most important here is of course the TX output power, which sets the strength that the transmitter will use for communication. And for determining these values good, you can use this design calculator here. In the first step, of course, you must select the correct chip and everything. And what's important about this application is that in my tests, it does not work in Firefox. So this is a Google Chrome only program. And be that as it may, here we find the configuration. There is the most important thing. There is first of all a radio events structure here, which is a struct which takes in the various event pointers, such as here trans transaction done and transaction timeout. And then here we've got the actual initialization. This is by and large box standard Arduino code. The only thing which is interesting is this global radio object, which allows you to communicate with the transceiver. And then here in the loop method, we see first of all, we erect a package, then we send the package. And what is most important, regularly we call this method, because this method gives the stack the time to actually interact and react to the data. And then finally here we've got two event handlers. There's not particularly much to see here. And then you can already send this off on its merry little way.
and the next step then is that we go here into the serial monitor and we see it's sending out these messages quite regularly and it will do so even if we power it from a power bank. The next thing we need is the receiver. He also lives here in the examples, but we go here again to the Heltec. We go to the LoRa Basic, and now we select the LoRa receiver. And we see again the usual startup, but what makes it interesting now is that we use the radio object again, but with the set RX config method, which is responsible for setting up the receiver. And here we go into receive mode. We regularly call the RX method, which says receive some data, as you see here. And it's just continuously. And in case it ever does return, we just give compute power. And because up here we used radio in it, the actual message receiving is then handled like so. And again, we deploy it, which I already did before. We go into the serial monitor and then we can see happily that we are receiving the information. So it has been possible to exchange data. Next, I decided to go for a little walk. The sender I connected to a power bank, put it in front of a bit of real estate which I own, and then I just went on a little walk around the city. And before we look at the ranges reached with the stock antennas, which are usually quite crappy, I wanted to just say thank you so much to the company Cartotype, which are old friends of the house and which did the data visualization, which I'm going to be using in the following steps. If you ever need a maps rendering solution based on OSM, definitely give them a chance. So, and for the test, I set this to 20 and then I went for a little walk. And here you see these individual bubbles telling you the strengths that we reached. And what we see here is that a direct connection yields the best and buildings it doesn't like so much. So you see here we still had a good reception. Here the reception wasn't so bad. Here in the back it was completely lost, whereas here it was kind of good. And these 90 dBm, oh, I made a mistake here. The 90 dBm, they actually have to go, wait, they have to go over here. So we've got 90 dBm actually here. So what do we see? As long as there is a direct line of sight, because this is a park, things work very well. And this is about 200 meters from here to here. So we see that even with the cheap stock antenna, we actually get a very, very good connection. And with that, I wanted to thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.